Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick, and uh, we are almost done with the SwiftUI Bootcamp, so I hope you guys have been enjoying it, but unfortunately, I left a couple of the harder videos for the end of the bootcamp here. And uh, these videos are, although they're a little difficult, I think they are crucially important for actually building full apps, and we're gonna use them every time we build an actual application, so they are very important to be in the bootcamp. And the first of these difficult topics is this one, which we're gonna talk about observable object and state object. And these sound a lot harder than they actually are, but they're basically just property wrappers that we can use to observe other classes in our app and have them update our view in real time. So just like we use an at state variable for all the variables within our view, we can use an at state object to reference another class if something is happening in that class and have our view update. So they look a little ugly and they look a little daunting, but they're actually super easy to understand. And I'm gonna take the time in this video to really go through what's going on so you can understand why we use these property wrappers. Hope you enjoy it, let's take a look. What's up everyone, I am back in Xcode. This is gonna be one of possibly the harder videos of the course. So if you just did a whole bunch of videos, it might be time to take a break and come back or better than that, actually just grab a coffee and come on back. Uh, but let's get into this video. Let's start by creating a new file in our project. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It will be a Swift UI view. And we're gonna call this view model bootcamp. And we're calling it view model because as we get into MVVM architecture, and you're gonna start hearing this MVVM a lot as you build apps, uh, the view model is basically the class where all of the data behind the scenes for your app is going to be located. And we're gonna be creating a view model in this video. So we're gonna call it view model bootcamp. Let's go ahead and click create. Once you're inside, click resume on that canvas and let's get coding. So we do have some setup for this video that we need to get through first. And I'm going to start by creating a navigation view here, opening the brackets. Inside the navigation view, we're gonna add a list. We're gonna open the brackets again. And in this list, I wanna loop on a bunch of items. In the last video, we learned how to make custom models, custom data types, and we're gonna do that now. So if you did not watch the last video, if you do not know how to make a custom data type, go watch that one and then come on back. But we're gonna make a list of fruits in this app right now. So let's create a model for our fruit. So we're gonna create a struct, call it fruit model, open the brackets, and each fruit is gonna have a name. So let's say let name of type string, and each fruit is also gonna have a count. It's gonna be how many of those fruits that we wanna buy at the store. So maybe we wanna buy five apples or four apples. We can use the count. So let's do let count of type int. We have our custom data type fruit model here, and we wanna make it conform to identifiable. This way we can use it easily in a for each loop. We covered that again in the last video. So to make it conform to identifiable, we need to add an ID. So we'll say let ID of type, and I like to use strings, and let's set it equal to a UUID, open and close parentheses, dot UUID string. So this UUID function creates a random user ID, and then we're just converting it into a string so that it is a string. Nothing new here. Let's loop on these fruits, so let's do for each, open the parentheses. We're gonna use the first one with the data and content, we of course need a data array, forgot to do that. So at the top here, let's do at state var, uh, fruit array of type, and it's gonna be an array of fruit model. And let's just set it equal to a blank array for now. So we're not gonna actually add any fruits right here. And we're gonna loop on this fruit array. So for each, the data is gonna be fruit array. And then the content, we'll press enter, get rid of this ugliness, and just type in fruit. So we're looping on each fruit in the fruit array, which is currently empty. And what do we wanna put here uh, for each fruit? So very simply, let's just add a, an H stack. And on the left, we're gonna have the title. So let's do a text with fruit.name. 
let's actually create let's actually add one fruit in here just for now so we can see what we're typing so let's add a fruit model here let's call it apples and let's do five so I will click resume on the canvas just so we can build and we can see what this apple is going to look like apples and before the apples let's just add the count of how many apples we want here so let's do another text and we'll do make it a string forward slash open and close parentheses and we're going to add the fruit dot count in here so we're converting that integer into a string so it says five apples let's make the name with a dot font of headline and maybe bold this count let's just give this a color so let's do dot foreground color of maybe red doesn't really matter for now so we have five apples here this is nothing special let's wrap up this view let's add a navigation title here let's call this fruit list and let's add a style to the list so let's quickly just add dot list style and I'm gonna start typing in list style and I'm gonna go this time with maybe uh, the grouped list style just to change it up here so we have our fruit list with five apples nothing new here and when this list appears on the screen I want to add a bunch of fruits to this fruit array so underneath this navigation title I'm gonna add dot on appear this again should be nothing new to you because we've covered this all in this course and when we appear I want to call a function to fetch a bunch of fruits from our database and then append them to our fruit array so underneath the body here I'm gonna create a function and it's gonna be called get fruits open and close parentheses open the brackets on up here we're gonna call get fruits and all we're gonna do is append a bunch of fruits to our fruit array so let's say let uh, fruit one equals let's fruit model and we're just gonna create some fake fruits here uh, let's do orange count one let fruit two equals fruit model open parentheses and let's do banana uh, the count here I'll do two doesn't really matter let fruit three equals fruit model open the parentheses and this time let's just do another fruit let's do watermelon with uh, maybe 88 we're gonna get 88 watermelons here and then we're gonna just append these three fruits into our data array so let's just do fruit array dot append and we'll just add fruit one I'm gonna copy this paste it two more times and then just do fruit two fruit three so on up here we call it get fruits we create three fake fruits append three fake fruits to our data array I'm gonna click resume on the canvas quick and when it appears we get all four fruits here let's actually just cut this apple out of here so we start with a blank array and we just have our three fruits here orange banana and watermelon and now we are in a list and I did a whole video on lists earlier in this course so you should be comfortable with what a list can do and we're gonna use some of its really cool features now such as the swipe to delete so on this for each I'm gonna add dot on delete and we can perform an action on delete and we're gonna create a function to delete from this index set so at the bottom here let's create a new function func delete fruit open and close parentheses open the brackets and when we go to delete fruit we need to know exactly what the index is that we're swiping on so I'm gonna create a parameter called index and this will be of type index set and this index set is coming from this index set here and all we're gonna do is call fruit array dot remove at and then there is a completion at offsets which expects an index set so that's exactly what we have and we're just going to add here and then we're going to pass in our index and now we have our delete function to remove at this index let's put this in our code and as we've done before because this is an action and it's looking to pass in an index set and that's exactly what this delete fruit is I can just delete from the start of this bracket to the end of this bracket here and in this perform we're just going to call delete fruit with an index 
And I think we can actually even delete this index here and just call delete fruit and it will know exactly what's going on. So let's test it out quick. We have our function to get fruits. We have our function to delete fruit. And let's click resume. Press play. On a peer, we called get fruits. Now we have our orange, our banana, and our watermelon. And now I can swipe to delete. And if I click this delete button, it should actually delete and it's gone forever. So this is perfect. This is all working. This should not be anything new. If you have been confused about anything in this video so far, I highly recommend looking at the earlier videos in this course because I did a whole video on lists, a whole video on uh, models. I did a whole video on, on a peer and all of this should not be new. And it, now what we're going to do is basically instead of having this fruit array directly in the view and instead of having all of these functions directly in the view, we're going to create a custom class to host all of this extra data. And the reason we do this is because when we get into complex applications, it is better and smarter to start to separate all of the logic in our app. Because although this is a very short screen and this works, it is recommended to separate the code and the logic for the different functions in your app. So for example, in this body here, this is all this is all code that's related to the actual UI of our app. This is the actual code for the view. And that's why we should keep this in the view. But all of this other code here, this get fruits, this delete fruit, this has nothing to do with the view directly. This is only to do with our data array. So if this function had a lot of other information and it was downloading from our database, that has nothing to do with the view. It only has to do with getting data and storing that data. So we basically are going to separate the data functions from the actual view from the UI functions. So it sounds a lot harder than it is. We're going to very simply create a class and we're going to call this a uh, fruit view model. And then we're going to open the brackets and in this fruit view model, we are going to then put our fruit array. So I'm going to say var fruit array of type array of fruit model. I'm going to set this equal to a blank array. So same thing that we have right here. But you'll notice that I did not include the at state. And that's because we can only use at state when we're in a struct, when we're in a view. And we are now in a class. So this class has nothing to do with the actual view. It just has to do with the fruit data here. So what we can do when we're in a class is use a new property wrapper called at published. And the published property wrapper, uh, there's a lot of really cool, crazy things that we can do with a published property wrapper. But for now and our purposes, all you need to really think about is that the at published is the same thing as the at state, except it's within a class. So when this fruit array gets changed, it notifies this fruit view model that, hey, something changed, you might have to update something because it's going to publish the new changes. So just like a state alerts the view that, hey, this fruit array changed, this published will alert the class itself, the fruit view model. So now what we need to do is get rid of this fruit array here and reference this fruit view model class. So I'm going to comment this out and we're going to add a new variable here. We'll say var uh, fruit view model. And I kept this F lowercase here, but it's uppercase here. Uh, so fruit view model, it's going to be of type fruit view model. And we're going to set this equal to a new fruit view model. And we're just going to open and close the parentheses here. We're immediately going to get an error that this fruit array, it can't find this fruit array. So instead of accessing this fruit array directly, we're going to access the fruit view model and then the fruit array that's inside it. So here we will add fruit view model dot fruit array. Now our error goes away. We're also then going to have this issue down here at the bottom because it cannot find this fruit array in our get fruits and our delete fruits. So I'm going to cut these both of these functions. Notice how we're removing all of this excess logic from our view. 
And I'm going to put this into our fruit view model here. So I'm going to paste it up here in the fruit view model. And now when I go down to our app here, this on delete, we can't reference this delete fruit directly, but we can access it through the view model. So we'll call fruit view model dot delete fruit. And again, we don't need that index here. And again, in the on appear, we now need to call fruit view model dot get fruits. So this logic is a little longer, but in total, this view is now much cleaner and much shorter because we don't have all that excess data, all that excess logic that is in regard to downloading and updating the fruit view model. So the logic that's within this view, and I'm even going to delete this now actually. So all the logic that's in this view here just has to do with updating the view. It's just the UI components. All of the logic that has to do with the actual data. So if we went and fetched from the data source, if we updated the data source, if we deleted the data, that's all in this fruit view model. And this might not seem that important when we're creating these very simple apps, but as you make complex apps, this is going to be highly important because all this logic for downloading from your database is going to be complex. And when you want to go in and change something for downloading something from your database, you don't want to spend time going through this view, trying to figure out what part is for the data, what part is for the view, what part is for something else. You want to instead just go straight to the fruit view model and then all of your logic for that downloading those fruits is going to be right in this class. Now we're almost done here, but if we click and resume, you'll notice that this actually does not work. So why is this not working? Well, that's because this right now, this fruit view model, we're creating it, but we're not telling this view that it's going to be updating. So just like we create regular variables here and we add at state, we need to add a property wrapper to this view model to tell the view that, hey, this might be changing. And if it's changing, we need to update our view. So what we're going to use is a new property wrapper called at observed object. This basically just tells the view to observe this object, because if this object changes, we need to update our view. So it's kind of doing the same thing as at state, except this observed object is a whole object. This is a whole class here, right? This is a whole class, whereas at state is usually just a single variable. And we're getting this error here finally because observed object requires that fruit view model conforms to observable object. That sounds so complicated, but it's the easiest fix. All we need to do is go to our fruit view model and make it conform to observable object. So we'll add a colon here and we will add observable object. This basically just lets Xcode know that this class is now observable and there might be views in our app that are observing what is happening within this view model. So let's click resume again on the canvas and see that it's actually working and we can still swipe to delete these items. And just to recap what we've done so far before we move to the rest of this video, because there is still a lot I want to cover here. Uh, but basically, we have our regular view and we want to take all of the data logic outside of the view. So all of the logic that's in the view just has to do with the UI. And all of the logic that has to do with downloading, updating our data is now in our fruit view model. And to do that, we created a custom class. The class is called fruit view model. And every time we create a variable inside this class that's going to be observed by the view, we add a published property wrapper on it. Because this just means that it's going to push, every time this changes, it's going to push an update to the entire object. And when this object gets updated, we know it is observable and we are observing it down here. So we're using observed object on the fruit view model. Before we move forward, let's add one more uh, published variable up here. So let's do at published var is loading of type bool equals false. And when we get fruits, I'm just going to simulate like we're going to a database and add a delay before we actually append these fruits. So let's add a dispatch queue 
dot main dot async after and we're gonna async after now plus three seconds and then hit enter on the execute and I'm just gonna append this inside this closure so before we append it let's put is loading equals true and after we append these let's do is loading equals false again I've done previous videos in this course with our dispatch queue I'm getting this quick error message here because we're inside this closure and because we're in this closure we need to just explicitly tell tell Xcode that this fruit array is in this class here so all we need to do is call self self dot fruit array dot append and I'll just paste that here and same thing for is loading just to reference self which is the current view model that we're inside not a big deal there so now we have is loading so now we have our is loading boolean set up and it is a published variable so we can watch that in our view directly so let's incorporate that into our list here so in our list if it's loading I just want to add a loading indicator and if it's not loading we'll have this for each loop so I will add if fruit view model dot is loading open brackets so if it's loading let's add a progress view and then we'll say else so if it's not loading we will cut this for each and the on delete and then paste it inside alright let's click resume on the canvas one more time to see this in action so it's loading three seconds we have our loading indicator and then after three seconds we append and we get our fruits so it's that easy to add another published variable up here to our fruit view model and now I know this video is getting long I know it is getting confusing but there's a bunch more that I want to cover here that is very very important so please hang with me here um, let's talk about this observed object so this observed object is great and it makes this view model observable so that we can access it when it's being updated on our view here but the unfortunate downside of this observed object is that if this view gets recreated so if it gets refreshed for whatever reason maybe there's some animation maybe there's something else going on in your app that just causes this view to reload well unfortunately this observed object would also reload and that's just how the observed object is made and usually in your app when you're downloading like a data set so like users or whatever data is on this view you don't really need it to reload and that's because even though the view is reloading right all the data the underlying data is not really changing so you kind of want the data to persist even if the view reloads and so there is another property wrapper we can use that is called at state object and a state object is the same thing as an observable object except basically if this view reloads if it re-renders this object will persist so it will not refresh and this is better for most cases when the view model is uh, holding all of our data because that underlying data is not really changing when the view needs to be updated so if we click resume the exact same thing is going to happen let's click play we have three seconds of loading we load our information except now if for any weird reason this view gets reloaded this view has to refresh this state object will not refresh it will persist which is exactly what we want so my quick rule of thumb for uh, everyone from beginner developers to expert developers is when you are creating these classes with this uh, observable object type if it's the first place you're creating it in your app use state object but if you're passing it into a second view or a sub view use observable object so let's put a comment for that we'll do at state object and let's say use this on creation or init whatever you want to call it so the first time I'm using this fruit view, view model in my app I would use state object but if I'm gonna pass it into another view if I pass this to the second view I'll use observed object in the second view so let's do another comment we'll do at observed object let's say use this for subviews 
So let's just do an example of this so that this is not too confusing. So, so let's create a second view to this screen here. And I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom, uh, maybe underneath this view, but before the preview, I'm gonna create another struct. This will be a second screen of type view, open the parentheses. And again, I've done other videos on creating subviews and subscreens, so this should not be new either. But to conform to view, we need to add a body, open the brackets, and this is exactly what it looks like when we start our new UI view. And in here, let's just add a Z stack. On the background of the Z stack, let's add color dot green dot ignores safe area. On top of the Z stack, let's just add a button. Open the parentheses. Let's give it a uh, action and label. For the label, this will say uh, go back. Let's make the foreground color dot white. Let's make the font dot large title. And let's make the font weight of semi bold. I'm getting a quick error here in valid redeclaration of second screen. It's because I've used this second screen in uh, elsewhere in other videos in this course. So I'm just gonna rename this. Let's just call this a uh, random screen. And I want to see what this looks like. So in our preview temporarily, let's comment out the view model bootcamp. Let's add in the random screen and click resume. Let's see what it looks like. I think that looks pretty good. When we click this, I want to actually go back. So we're going to add that presentation mode, which we've done before. So we'll do at environment. Uh, open the parentheses, key path, backslash, dot, presentation mode, var, and we'll call this presentation mode. When we click the button, we are going to call presentation mode, dot, wrapped, value, dot, dismiss. I've done a whole video on this. I hope this is not confusing. This is just going to go back in our navigation view. So this screen is all done. Let's put that view model bootcamp back. Let's delete the random screen from our preview and click resume let's add a button to our navigation bar so that we can go to that second screen let's do dot navigation bar uh, items let's do trailing i'm going to hit enter in here and add just a very simple let's add an image with a system name of uh, maybe arrow dot right let's give this a font of title make it a little bigger and let's make this a navigation link so that we can push in this navigation view so let's add navigation link open the parentheses we're going to use the destination and label destination of course will be our random screen and the label let's cut this image and font and paste it into the label here Now, let's click to that second screen. We have our data loading here. Let's click that second screen. And now let's press the back button. And you'll notice here that it went to start loading again. And then it actually appended three more items to our data. And if you're wondering why it did that, it's because we have this on appear function. And on appear gets called every time this fruitless screen appears on the screen. So when it started, it appeared. When we went forward and when we came back to it, it appeared again. So this is getting called multiple times and this is obviously not what we want. So instead of calling this on appear, I'm gonna delete this on appear function entirely. And then up in our fruit view model, we're gonna create a custom initializer. So when we init this, when we create this observable object, let's just call get fruits on the first time it is created. So we'll call init. And I've done a whole video on init's as well. So this should not be new. And in this initializer, we'll just call get fruits. So when are we initializing this fruit view model? Well, we're initializing it right here in our view. When we call fruit view model and we open and close the parentheses, 
this is our initializer. So as soon as we have this in our code, it's going to run this init function. Let's check it out. Let's click resume. We're loading, we have our data. Click to the next screen. I guess we didn't need this go back function because we have this fruits list here already. Uh, so let's just click the back button. And you notice how it did not reload this time. And it did not reload because we got rid of that on a peer. So this fruit view model loaded when it was first created and it did not have to reload when we went back. So this is better, this is exactly what we want. And now the whole reason I added this second screen is because what if we want to access this fruit view model from this screen? What if we wanted to access it on this screen? Well, on our second screen here, on our random screen, we can just add a variable here that is at observed object. And remember, remember what I said, use observed object when we're passing it in to a second screen. So that's what we're doing here. Observed object var, and we're going to call this fruit view model. This will be of type fruit view model. And then we're just going to leave it blank. We're not going to add an initial value here so that when we create a random screen in our init, it's going to ask us what is the fruit view model. So back up in our code, when we're calling random screen, it's now asking us to give it a fruit view model here. So I'm going to pass in our fruit view model to this screen. So fruit view model here. So we're creating it with a state object. We're going to pass it into our second screen. And our second screen is a observed object. And now we have this, all this data, this whole class in our second screen. So we actually don't need this button. I'm just going to delete this button. And in this second screen, let's just add maybe a V stack. And in here, just to prove that we have this data, let's add a for each loop here. Open the parentheses. The data is going to be fruit view model dot fruit array. The content will hit enter and it will be for each fruit. And in here, we'll just add some real quick text with the fruit dot name. Let's make this dot foreground color of white. Let's give it a font of headline. And let's just prove that this is all working. Let's click resume on the canvas. We're loading our data, orange, banana, watermelon. Now when we click this, we are passing that into the random screen. We are passing in our fruit view model. So we go to the next screen and now our second screen has access to that same fruit view model. We can see the data here. Uh, but but we actually did not create that view model in this screen. We created it in the last screen and passed it through. So this is a perfect example of when to use observed object. And on the first screen, when we initialize it, it is a perfect example of when to use a state object. So that's it for this video. I know this was a very long, very confusing one. I would probably, if I were you just learning this the first time, I would probably rewatch this again. Uh, because there's a lot of really important information here. When you create actual apps, when you have production apps, you're going to need to create classes that are going to hold all of your extra data, all of your data for downloading user profiles, user information for downloading posts. You want to put all that logic into a class. And of course, you want your view to be updating when the data in your class is updating. So inside the class, you have to create a published variable, which tells the class that something changed. And then we need to make the class conform to observable object so that we know, Xcode knows that it can observe this object. And then when you actually initialize this class, you need to use a state object. And this way with the state object, the view knows that if anything gets published in this view model in this class, it knows to update automatically. And lastly, if you're going to pass this view model around your app from screen to screen, you got to use observed object for all the other instances, but state object just for that first one. So very long video. Hope it wasn't too confusing. I definitely hope you learned something in this video. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to learn about environment objects, which are also very, very similar to both of these. So both of these videos go hand in hand. Definitely excited to show you guys that as well. 
Uh, leave a comment below if you learned something, but also leave a comment if you are still confused about anything. I'm always happy to help. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.